Hi, it's Robert Mitchell and I'm here at the 2015 Toronto International Film Festival. I'm here at Midnight Madness for the world premiere of The Girl in the Photographs. Can you tell me uh, a bit about the uh, story of the film? Um, it's it's a basically we were trying to do like I always wanted to make like a horror you know, like throwback horror 80s kind of film. Um, the story is about a, a, a girl who works at a grocery store who ends up being stalked by these creeps. Um, Cal Penn plays a fashion photographer who kind of discovers this whole story and then kind of comes to South Dakota where everything kind of comes to a head and bad things happen. You know, and <laughs> Can you tell me the character you're playing in the picture? Yeah, sure. So I play a guy named Peter Hemmings, who's a fashion photographer, a celebrity fashion photographer, so really full of himself, kind of creates this whole world around him uh, that serves him only. And uh, not too many redeeming qualities about him, but in the course of the film, it's a serial killer movie, so uh, you're not really sure if he may be the killer or if he's just a really weird dude. Um, that's one of the things that drew me to the project, was wanting to play a character who isn't necessarily likable for once, which was nice. Uh, is there any kind of research that you would uh, prepare to do this kind of role? You know, there was some. You, I wanted to find out. I was talking to the director of, about kind of how how we wanted to ground the character and making sure that um, you know, a lot of these photographers or, or any photographer really wants you know they want to do good work. They want to let people know that they're doing good work. But then at some point, there's a line between someone who's got the neuroses that my character does and a, a talented photographer of you know really milking that for what it is and finding that line was. A little bit of research, I guess, yeah. Could you tell me uh, the character you're playing in this picture? Yes, I play Colleen. She is from a small town in South Dakota. And she's stuck in a rut and uh, really wants more for herself. And while she's trying to figure out what she's going to do, she is being stalked by someone, somebody. And she's trying to solve this mystery of who's following her, what, what is this, going to the police, they're not believing her. And all of a sudden, this uh, group of L.A. townies come into her hometown and their paths kind of cross. And that's where the story kind of kicks off. I play... Uh Chris, he's Cal Penn's uh, opposite. Basically, Cal Penn plays uh, this very flamboyant, uh, wild photographer, and I am his assistant, and I basically have to clean up the mess that he makes throughout the film, and it's a very fun role. I'm glad uh, Cal Penn was, was the guy. It was, I was waiting to hear who was playing that role before I agreed to do the film, because my character relies a lot on him, and luckily I got a veteran like Cal, and he's amazing, and I'm excited. I'm excited for everyone to see it. Can you tell me about Tom? What's, uh, what was it like to play this character? It was really intense. Uh, he's a very dark individual, and um, uh, it was it was it was one of those things where it was really fun going. You know, the idea of it, and then I and then I jumped straight into it and started researching it, and then the kind of person he is. And yeah, there was definitely a point where I was like, oh, all right, yeah, this is um, it's dark, it's tough, it's it's a little bit scary. So probably fun to play as an actor, though. It really is. It was a huge challenge. It was um, it's it's not at all who I am, and it's it's so far removed from what I who I am as a person. So the, it was very um, it was it was very nice to be able to stretch that as an actor. Could you uh, tell me the character you're playing in the girl in the photograph? I play uh, Victoria, who is one of the models from LA, up and starting career. She's <laughs> described as the girl with dead eyes, you know, just your basic stereotypical model. But she's always a fight, a little bit of a spunk. She has blue hair and super fun, and it's just, you know, she's the quiet one, but, you know, she knows a little bit more than everyone. And uh, when you read the script, uh, what did you like about it? And you're like, I want to be a part of this picture. I read the script. I had just started acting, actually, a few weeks before I got the script. So it was pretty exciting. And I read the character. And they first described her as the not-so-smart model. And I was like, it's not that she's not so smart. She's just socially intelligent and knows she doesn't have to be smart. So it was a fun twist that I got to talk with the director, Nick Simon, over. And he's like, oh, my God, you get it. I'm like, of course I get it. I live in the model world. We don't, we're not dummies. We just you know, play the part. And uh, you worked with uh, Wes Craven on this picture. Can you talk about what it was like to work with uh, one of the masters of horror genre cinema? Yeah, I mean, he was uh, he started as a mentor and became a collaborator and uh, is a really good friend, you know. And he, he was with us every step of the way in this movie, um, in the trenches with us, trying to get this thing made and, and helped us with casting. And he watched every cut of the movie throughout editing, uh, watched dailies every day. He was a very active producer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've acted in a lot of movies and that, and you... Is there uh, anything from the craft that you might have learned uh, in, by acting in this particular film? Uh, I learned a lot from you know, everyone from uh, you know, Dean Cundy here, who's our cinematographer, did some of my favorite movies, Back to the Future and Hook and you know, all this stuff. So 
uh, certainly learned a lot from him, from Wes Craven, our producer, and and uh, and Nick, who's our, our director, has has actually a, you know a lot of great insight into these characters that he's he's helped bring to life. You mentioned Wes Craven, and what was it like to uh, meet and work with him? It was great. You know, uh, Nick has had much more time working with him. Uh, we unfortunately only had the chance to meet Wes uh, one afternoon when we did the table read and, and a work session, and he was incredible. Uh, I've never had a producer come up and say thank you for doing my movie. And we were kind of floored and sort of thought, what do you mean? We should be thanking you for putting us in your movie. Uh, and that was just sort of the guy he was. Very very humble, really loving and giving, and uh, was giving notes on the on the edits, uh, as far as Nick's been saying, uh, right up until the end. So it's an honor to be here tonight. We wish he was here with us, but he's certainly here in spirit. For what was it like, and how did you? Uh, what did you learn by working with all these people in this movie? You know, it was a really collaborative process, which was really freeing and um, supportive throughout this whole filming and even after we created the film because it was freeing as an artist. You were given sort of kind of freedom to create a character and have fun with it and Wes was always involved every day watching the dailies giving notes. Nick is amazing to work with because he knows what he wants, he knows how to get it and he's going to work with you no matter what. And Dean is just a legend. I mean the guy knows what he's doing and you question it at first, you're like, okay, why is he being so specific? And then you realize, you're like, it's Dean Cundy, of course, duh, you know? <laughs> but um, it's it's been such an amazing, amazing film, and um, I'm so happy that, you know, we were able to make Wes's last film. How do you feel you've grown as an actor uh, by playing this uh, character? You know, it's probably more so about working with the people that we worked with. Dean Cundy was just, I mean, I, I was starstruck by him. You know, I've, I've grown up watching his watching the films that he's lensed. Wes Craven, I absolutely fangirled when I met him. And, and to the point where it was just embarrassing. You know, I, I, I was like, I, you know, <laughs> this is not good. I, you know, I need to leave right now before I say something really bad. But, um, and obviously Nick Simon, I learned so much from him. He's very, um, he's a, such an amazing director in that he will only, he'll only interfere if he really needs to. And if he does, it'll be so special specific and it kind of threw me the first time he gave me a note I was like okay all right that is something that is and, and my mind made it bigger than it was it, it was literally he was like just don't furrow your eyebrow and I was like oh okay but you know I made it this big thing I was like well maybe it maybe he means that maybe he means don't get you know so anyway uh, but it was amazing working with the people that I worked with and the talent uh, this is a script that you had been working on for years with some of your writing partners Oz Perkins who also has a film in Vanguard yeah, Oz and uh, Robert Morris also and these just a couple of friends and it was like a, it was like a hobby spec script that we were working on for a long time and we both went on to write other things uh, that had came out and we just kind of go back to this. It wasn't until one point where I was talking to Wes about other projects we had going uh, and he's, he's, I just said, I don't know if I should try to get it made, I don't know what I should do with it. And he's like, yeah, send it over, I'll read it. And then he loved it and said, let me help you make it. You know? and I'm sure that this picture looks amazing, you have an amazing cinematographer you're working Andy, it's like I describe it as a biblical experience. I mean, he shot my entire childhood. You know? uh, I sat down with him at a, a, a lunch to try to talk him into doing a movie where he was pretty, I'm pretty sure he was interviewing me to make sure I knew what I was doing. Um, and I remember going like, you know, I could show somebody all of your movies or you could just shoot this, you know. And, uh, he, he loved the script too and he had a relationship, he knew Wes, you know, obviously and um, he came on and we've been really lucky to have him. What was it like to act? As you said, it's your first picture then? It must have been nervous and exciting and all of that emotion. Oh my god, it was so crazy, but everyone in the cast and the crew just made me feel right at home right away. We were a big family, Cal, Miranda, Luke, everyone. We just kind of all gravitated to each other and the male counterpart that I have an eye on, Oliver, we just, we connected right away and so it was one big family. So as nervous as I was, the, nettle, the nerves that I have now apparently just settled right down. It was exciting and it's exciting being here back my hometown and from I'm from Toronto and Vancouver but you know this is where it's all started for me so amazing. Well, how can you not like be like so excited to work with this amazing team that was assembled for this movie it's amazing and it was it was funny because uh, Wes came to the table read that we did and, and that was the moment where it felt real he said um, it was the best script he'd read since Scream and wow. um, the cast was so talented and he we went with talent over names and he said your DP is the best in the business. He was like, I trust Nick wholeheartedly. He was like, this film is amazing. He's like, anything could happen from this point on, you know? But you're set up so, so well that uh, he was like, I, I have so much faith in this movie. And I remember being like, oh, this is real. Like, <laughs> I have, uh, I got a tweet from a small cinema in Sioux Falls. And they said, I have to ask you about uh, Nick Simon Day. Oh, that's right. 
Nick Simon Day, uh, because I wrote a movie called The Pyramid that came out last year, and the mayor of my hometown, uh, they dedicated a day to me, which is very, very nice. C considering that there is a also another filmmaker from there that uh, won an Oscar, but she also had a day named after her. So Amazing. yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any chance of winning an Oscar from the genre. So we'll, I should be fine. Well, I saw a picture today where everybody was in the. Isn't that so great? That's so great. Yeah, it's my old uh, junior high. It's so nice. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so crazy. So much support and love back then, you yeah. know? That's great. Yeah. I'm sure uh, the landscapes of South Dakota must have inspired your imagination. Oh, absolutely. And, and the whole movie takes place in South Dakota. We shot it in Victoria, British Columbia, and uh, I actually shot part of it in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A little, just a little, you know, some uh, second unit, you know, kind of pickup shots. But, yeah.